In this episode, we're going to talk about microphone techniques and how you can apply what you've learned in the previous chapters. Before we go into mic positioning, there are two things we need to introduce, directional responses and diaphragm size. The directional response of a mic refers to its output level at various angles of incidence with respect to the front of the microphone. Microphone directionality can be classified into two categories, omnidirectional polar responses and directional polar responses. The omnidirectional mic pick up sound uniformly from all directions. This pattern produces a very natural sound, it offers the least off-axis coloration of any pattern type and does not exhibit proximity effect. A bidirectional or figure of eight mic picks up sound from the front and the rear and it rejects signals that arrive from the sides of the capsule. Sounds originating at the rear produce a voltage that is 180 degrees out of phase with the front. Sound waves arriving at 90 degrees off axis produce an equal but opposing pressure at both the front and the rear of the diaphragm, resulting in no output. Ribbon microphones were the first bidirectional acoustic transducers because the motion of the ribbon results from differences in pressure between the front and the rear faces. The cardioid pattern is designed to fully pick up sound that originates from the front, to reduce by at least 6 dB sound that arrives from the sides, and to reject sound that arrives at the rear lobe of the microphone. Because this pattern reduces sound from the rear by 15 to 25 dB, it is mostly used for applications that need leakage and noise control. The supercardioid or the hypercardioid type of microphone are used where side rejection is preferred while capturing some ambience through the small area of sensitivity directly off axis. They exhibit phase reversal when sounds arrive at the rear lobe. We now know that the diaphragm is the membrane that first reacts to sound pressure. Within the same type of microphone, there are different applications depending on the size of the diaphragm. Generally speaking, small diaphragm microphones tend to do a good job capturing high-frequency content and transients. Their applications include acoustic guitars, string instruments, brass, cymbals and any other instrument you would want to emphasize that high end. Here's the sound of an acoustic guitar with an AKJ451. Large diaphragm microphones tend to have a big sound because they tend to emphasize the low end. These mics are usually chosen to record vocals and they're very good for instruments where the mid and low end is fundamental. Bear in mind that large diaphragm condensers cannot withstand large SPLs. If you are using it to close mic drums, always apply a pad. Here's the sound of an acoustic guitar with a Rode NT2A. Now let's talk about microphone techniques. There are two types of mic placement to capture a sound source, close and distant placement. In close miking, the instrument is positioned one inch to three feet from the transducer. This often produces a tight, present sound quality and it's the best choice to exclude room ambience. Here's an example of an acoustic guitar. In distant microphone placement, the position of one or more mics is at a distance of 3 feet or more from the sound source. This technique allows acoustic reverberation and room ambience to be picked up and naturally mixed with the direct signal. 
Distant miking techniques tend to add a live feel to the recorded sound. Here's the same acoustic guitar with the microphone placed at 3 feet. Thank you. 